So we're doing a day trip to Paris, Ontario today. Apologize for some of the traffic noise in the background here. We're on a bit of a lookout that overlooks the town of Paris. And the purpose of this video is to kind of give you a little bit of history of the town. Some of the buildings that are here today that were here 100 years ago or more. And some that are no longer here. Uh, that big large building in the foreground down there. I, I haven't been in town now probably in several years. That building is totally new, was not there at all the last time I was in town. But there are still plenty of things to see around this town though. So we're going to take a drive around, point some of the buildings out. Uh, if I do know what it used to be, I'll let you know. Town has quite a history to it. So here's a war memorial as you're coming into the south end of the town. A little park area here. And this parking lot. Now this parking lot is right beside the Nith River. There used to be a flour mill here and that was an iron bridge in the early days. So the flour mill was right there where those park cars are parked now and this park didn't exist then either. This building is the one from the lookout we saw that I said was completely new. I call it the Royal and it's uh, condos that are up for sale. Uh, prior to that being there, I remember a hotel there called the Royal. The hotel was quite an old building. Uh, it was run down the last time I had seen it. I'm not surprised that it got tore down. This is Mechanic Street. There's some buildings on the other side of Mechanic Street there. And that's it's the main street through town. Now, I don't know how many of these buildings were here over a hundred years ago, but I know some of them are. You can see the cobblestone wall on the side of that one back there. Now, Paris is said to be the oldest cobblestone town still in Canada. I don't know. I didn't check that fact. I don't know if that's a, an official designation by anyone or not, or whether that's just something they say. So we'll continue on and do some more looking around. Paris was originally founded as a town in 1850. There was a population here before that. An 1841 census had a thousand people on it at that time. There were a lot of mills in this town. There's two rivers, the Nith River and the Grand River, and they come together in this town. So in the early days, it was a, a very popular place for mills because there was lots of water power. So that one there, you can see the Paris Wincy Mill Company, and it's now been turned into a lot of shops and cafes and stuff like that, but it's been here for a very long time. I remember when it was a Canadian Tire store before it was renovated to its current state. I was gonna show you another building, but I see that it's no longer there. Where that parking lot is there, the last time I was in town was an OPP station. It's Ontario Provincial Police. And formerly before that, it was a post office. So it's completely gone now. So this is the Nith River. And this would be the end of the Nith River, the exit point. That's the same bridge I showed you just a few minutes ago from another angle. So just the other side of that bridge, it flows into the Grand River. another building in Paris that's getting to be relatively old. This is the library. It was built in 1904. the backs of the stores and the shops that are downtown. It's where the Nith River, you can see that cement wall in the background down there. That's where the Nith River comes out into the Grand. 
This is the Grand River that we're now looking at. Paris has also been subject to many, many floods over the years. See the cobblestone foundations that are on these buildings. And there are some pictures. If you go on, uh, look at the Paris Museum Historical Society, there's a number of old photos. And you can see some where the water level is just about up to the top of the cobblestone foundations on these buildings. Uh, we're looking at the Grand River in the opposite direction now. A large railway bridge there in the background. And that is called the John Penman's Dam. It was built in 1918. We'll have more on that name, John Penman, later in this video. And you can't see it from here, but on the other side of that river bank, and just beyond, just beyond the houses that are right there, there's a park called John Penman's Park. That area there is all new condos back in that area. That's where John Penman's number two and three mill were once located back in the early 1900s. There's a park we're headed to down there. That's John Penman's Park. And there's a trail, like a walking, hiking, bicycle trail, that starts there and goes all the way to Cambridge. It's an 18 kilometer trail. Uh, it's fairly level from what I hear. It used to be an old rail line. So maybe someday we'll do a video in the fall, maybe when the colors are out, the trees are changing. Maybe we'll take a nice bike, bicycle ride all the way to Cambridge down that trail and we'll see what that looks like. A little bit of history on this building. This is called Penmarvian. Now, I don't have any photos. I don't know what the original property looked like. But this was the original home or the site of the home of, I believe his name is pronounced Hiram Capron. And he was the founder of Paris. Now, Paris existed before him, but he was the gentleman who, in 1850, he had purchased 1,600 acres and hired a surveyor to lay out the plot of Paris. And his home was here. Uh, he later sold it to John Penman from the Penman textile mills that were in town. And he did extensive renovations, turned it into this and called it Penmarvia. Uh, when John Penman passed, he willed it to the church as a retirement center for clergy. And today it is a retirement home for anyone. Beautiful looking building. And it's been here a very long time. Now I particularly wanted to bring you to this spot where I am able to give you some real history on this old building complex. So starting with those buildings down at that end, all the way up to the building at this end. And there are several buildings that are not even here on this property any longer. So this is all being turned into apartments and condos and stuff now in here. But at one time, this was John Penman's number one textile mill. That building right there was built in 1874. That was the first building on this property. And these other buildings were added over subsequent years. They were all connected when I was here in this building. They were connected by catwalks. Uh, there was a freight elevator in that building there was one freight elevator you can see the change in elevation of the the roof line there one is a four-story and the other a three-story the four-story building on the front side in the corner there was a freight elevator there and that one at the very far end there was a freight elevator in that one so what's not here that square structure chimney stack that was all the way up there was another two-story building in that location and this building had the boiler system in it for heating this complex so it was uh, steam pressure you know the boiler would build up and it would expose itself throughout the pipes throughout the buildings and heat the entire place where they've got a park area set up over here there was another building here, and this was the power generation building for this property. So I'll move up a little closer and give you some history on that building that used to be here. 
So that's where we were standing a moment ago down by those vehicles. This is the park area. So we've came up the hill to the other side of the park. Now this is just a bit of a forest that's out here. What's no longer here, I don't know, you can't really tell that much. You can see how this hill dips down in. There's a little bit of water, a little bit of a creek down there. This was all water at one time. This was uh, where the raceway, the, pond, the, the mill pond was. And water would have came around through here. And I'll turn around. So this cement wall that's here is the front wall of the foundation from the power generating building that sat here. And, our, and I, I was inside that building before it was destroyed, before it was tore down. So water from the mill pond here was brought in. There was a series of gates that could be opened to judge how much water or control how much water flow came in under the power building. There was a large paddle wheel that the water would turn around in the basement level at the water level. And then as that uh, the shaft from that water wheel came up, it turned a generator at the top producing the electricity. And the control panels that were in this building were looked like something out of a Frankenstein movie with the large toggle switches, you know, that took your whole hand to move up and down and there were lots of amp meters, voltage gauges, all that sort of stuff on panels. Everything was open and exposed. You wouldn't want to put your hand in the wrong spot or you'd have been fried for sure. The grass hill that's just on the other side of this park that we walked up, to imagine there would have been a cement retaining wall that went from here out to where that driveway goes downhill. And this area was dug down to the level of that lower parking lot and it was the coal dump so trucks would have come down in this driveway backed up dumped coal over the wall into this huge area and where that building was where that chimney still standing uh, again for the boiler system there were ra railway tracks for the little coal carts that would take coal from this area across that roadway and into that building for the boiler system so the reason I know so much about this building, this was, John, as I said before, this was John Penman's textile mills. Um, later at some point, I can't remember exactly when, it was sold still to a textile company called Pride of Paris. After the Pride of Paris folded up, it sat empty for a number of years. The company I worked for that was in the town of Paris needed more space, so they bought this property up. And we had uh, a lot of renovating to do to make it into something usable as a warehouse distribution center. So this taller building was completely renovated into offices for the company. And the rest of the buildings on the property were renovated into usable warehouse space. They had a lot of offices that they had, you know, temporary type things, put up walls and carpeting and all that um, previously. So I was sent down here with a small crew of people and we were here about a year uh, looking after renovating all of those buildings turning them back into usable space and they hired professionals to come in and renovate this one into office space because it had to have all new electrical and cabling run for the computer systems and all that sort of stuff and now at the time it's hard, uh, we'll see if we can see it here yes so typical when they renovate buildings nowadays for new purposes or apartments you see how the windows are a complete rectangle, the tops are straight. When we did this uh, back when I was here and we did the renovation, we kept the original arched topped windows throughout. And I hired my wife actually for a time. She was part of the crew and her sister also. And they painted every window in this building. So some of us, uh, who weren't afraid of heights, we had the job, we would take the windows out and we would paint the window frames in the brickwork and they would sand and paint all the windows around all the glass. And that now you can see why we were here for a year. <laughs> we painted every room inside, uh, spray painting of course, we didn't brush and roller that much in an area and they painted every window. So that's why I have so much history of this building.
if you're someone who happens to live in this building now and you see this video, you might be surprised to know just what took place here. This is on the front side of this building now, and they've built a, a roof covering there. The area that's been bricked out between the windows is where the freight elevator was. And that doorway that they've made, not the double doors, but the single door rather. I'm going to walk down here a little closer. So that single door entrance there, the window immediately to the left of it, that's where my office was when I was here. As I said, there's far too much history for this town than you can possibly pack into a short video. Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, made his first long distance call to a store here in this town in Paris. Uh, the Queen has visited or traveled through Paris with the Royal Train on a couple of occasions. There are still a number of cobblestone houses and churches and other buildings still in town. There's a house in town. I'm not going to say where because it's now a private residence, but there is a house in town from the mid-1800s that was part of the Underground Railway Network, uh, helping to free slaves from the south. There's just a tremendous amount of history about this town. So hopefully you found this video interesting. Uh, there's a lot more information online. All the black and white photos I've used were compliments of the Paris Museum and Historical Society. The copyright uh, by Canadian law, the copyright has expired on these photos now, so they've made them available online. There's just so much about this small town. It's, it's an amazing place. Thank you very much for watching.